Today we're going to continue uh, thinking about the algorithm uh, where we take the maximum element of a list. Um, and we're going to use this exercise to introduce the notion of ta tail call optimization, which is a very important feature of um, any real functional programming language. Um, basically, if you're not doing this, uh, you shouldn't be calling yourself a, tail, uh, a function, functional programming language. So let's 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 go back to our example, and and this is just to recap. This is our uh, initial version, uh, where we we had this big uh, conditional, and then we were we had these two cases, and we noticed that there was some repetition going on here. So the same, uh, basically, in the recursive call, if the first element of the list uh, was not uh, the greater then you would compute the maximum number again so you would this would lead to an exponential blowout which would make the the code really slow then what we did was we introduced uh, a local definition uh, of this variable rest max uh, where we stored the the result of computing ma the maximum number of the remainder of the list and then we finally did the, the comparison where we either check if the element is the first or not. Um, and that led to a 5,000 um, time improvement for a million elements. So in, with 100 milliseconds, you could, store, you could process a million elements, whereas with, in the original version, you could only process 20 elements. So now... The question is, can we do better? Um, and I'm going to try to improve the code. Um, and the, the reason why it's faster is not apparent, because I'm not going to change the actual algorithm. But you will see that it actually becomes a bit faster, like five times faster. So let's see. So what we have here, well, let me clean the screen and make this a tad bigger okay so this is the same algorithm as i showed you before right uh, and now what i want to do is notice that what we're doing is we are uh, first doing the recursion and then we're doing a comparison so what i want to do now is kind of rewrite the algorithm so that we do um, this step uh, sorry we do the recursive call at the end so that has to be the last operation being done so now let me try to kind of rewrite the code. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to create um, an internal um, definition of max. So let me do define max uh, iter. And this max function, I'm going to call it aux for auxiliary. And I'm going to have uh, two parameters. The first parameter I'm going to use b basically as a what is known as an accumulator. But you can think of it as... Um, what we the only way we we have to kind of simulate a notion so far that we to kind of simulate a notion of a mutable bu mutable variable. So in a loop, usually you have uh, these variables that you keep updating while you're going through the loop, and this would be the equivalent of that. So we're going to use uh, first. I'm going to put here the list in the first parameter, and in the second parameter, we're going to write uh, max so far. Okay. So this will store the maximum number that we've computed so far. And now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to add a conditional. So I'm going to replicate a bit of this um, kind of code. So let me just copy paste that. OK, so in the first case, the list is empty. So we do, we're not going to consider that. We're going to assume the list is never empty uh, because we're going to take care of that in the outermost uh, code. Okay, so in this max ox, we know for sure that x, the, the list of elements, uh, is not, not empty, so has at least one element. So if, if the rest of the list has at least one element, then we return the first. Otherwise, what we do um, is we compute the remainder of the elements, but we want to call max ox now. But what is the accumulated value so far? So now we want to do that computation. So what I want to do is I want to store here, define um, cur max. Okay, so the current maximum number 
um, which is uh, basically if the first element is greater than um, the max so far um, then that's the value I want to store so I want to store here uh, the first element otherwise what I want to do is um, I want to store the current sorry the max so far okay so the only thing I'm doing now is I'm updating let me make sure okay so what am I doing here I'm creating a new variable which says the current maximum number so far is uh, if the first element of the list is greater than the max so far then my current max is the first element of the list otherwise it's the max so far because it's bigger than the first element of the list okay so this is basically a very simple thing that I'm doing so let me compute update the current maximum number so far okay uh, so now that I have this what I can do is I can uh, call my maximum number right and I can pass it it's the current maximum number and recursively I can take care of calling the remainder of the function so let's see how this works what's gonna happen is um, we will let me kind of initialize this so otherwise otherwise what do we do we're gonna call max ox we don't need any of this right so the maximum number of xs and uh, I guess we could do first of xs Okay, so what are we doing here? And we could even pass the rest of XS. Oh, wait, let's not do that, because then we wouldn't have the base case. Okay, so let me explain what we're doing here. So we define this recursive uh, implementation of max that uses um, a parameter to store the current maximum uh, values so far okay so what we're doing is we're gonna check if the list is empty if it is that's an error as we know otherwise what we do is we take the first element of the list and we'll say this is the maximum number so far and then we will use that number that we keep updating here whenever we do a recursive call uh, wait I'm kind of using the parameters wrong make sure everything is consistent current max okay this should be fine so the elements are excess at the end okay sorry gonna let me repeat so check if the list is empty if it's not I'll take the first element of the list and that's the biggest number so far and then I pass uh, the list itself to this function um, I'm going to answer why I'm passing this and not rest in a second, but for now let's continue. Uh, so then what we do is we check if the first element of the list, right, that's the first uh, value, is uh, first we check if the list is empty, or I mean it has at least, it has exactly one element. If it does, then return that first element. Uh, actually, this is wrong, right, because we, now we need to check. Um, I guess the easiest thing is maybe we should define a max of two. Max of two, right? It takes an x and a y. And what it does, it let's just implement this. Basically, this. I think it's something like this, right? So, the maximum of two elements. Let me just indent this properly. Okay. So x and y. If x is greater than y then return x otherwise uh, return y okay so compute the maximum of two elements okay 
So now what we do is we do current max is the max of 2, and then we take the we take uh, the max so far and first of excess. Right? Makes it much simpler, much cleaner to look at the code. Uh, and now we recurse. Now we recurse. Okay. So make sure all the parentheses are right. Yes. Yes. Okay. So what did we do? We define in max of two just for the sake of. Um, simplicity because we're going to use it. It kind of cleans up the code a bit. So we have a, a single definition of this is just the maximum number between two numbers, right? Uh, then we have the the recursive implementation of max aux and what it does, it takes the maximum number so far and if, um, if the list only has one element, now what we do is uh, we return the max of two of the current max uh, max so far and the first element of the list okay um, and then what we do is if the list is not empty then we take the first element of the list we update the maximum number uh, between the first element of the list and the max so far and um, by the magic of recursion by passing the updated current maximum number to the first parameter uh, and by making the list smaller then magically we will get the maximum number of the whole list okay and then how do we initialize this well we take the first element of the list that will be the uh, largest so far and um, we take xs and you may be wondering why don't i just take the rest of uh, xs well, if you were to do that, then you would need to add another condition here, uh, checking if the list is empty. Um, and that would only happen in the... I mean, you could do that, but it kind of makes the code a bit uh, uglier. And the cost is just comparing it once more, which is... Uh, what I'm saying is that if the list only... If the, the first is the... Um, you know, the list only has one element, you will be comparing it twice in this case. Just not a big deal. Uh, really, you should always strive to optimize for the the recursive step when s something is happening n times, not when it's just happening once and you're saving it one time. Um, I mean, as a general rule of thumb, that's not always the case, but it's a good principle to think how to prioritize. Basically, what you want to do um, in functional programming is kind of have this shape, and we're gonna. Basically, the rest of the lecture is going to be focusing what does it mean to be tail optimized. But this is something, this is the, the tail optimized version. Uh, and now, if I run this version, max.record, I have parentheses missing, of course. Line 17. Ah, of course, I forgot this one. Okay, first fist instead of first. First. Uh. Okay, let's see if this works now. Okay, and now I can store um, twenty thousand elements per uh, millisecond, and before max one I could store let's see how long it takes I could store oh this is sorry this is not the this is the original version right now the second version the second attempt that we had uh, can store uh, 20,000 and now we can store Wait, is this also 20,000? What did I do wrong?
Okay. Let me see what I'm doing wrong. I think this should this must be this has to be faster. Let's see. Wait, what if I do third? Okay, here it's a fa it's faster. So what did I what did I miss this? Let me look at the prepared version. looks very similar to what I have now. Interesting. So what is happening is that I'm not seeing uh, the speed up gains and I'm trying to understand why, why that is the case. So I did this as well, which is fine. And then did max aux, current max xx. And then I have a conditional. I actually optimized this. I found out that we're computing. Ah, yeah, actually that's cool. So we're computing this twice so we can kind of optimize this. So when we do it once, okay, that's the one difference. Is that the only difference? Otherwise you compute max. Seems good. Um, Oh, it was 10 times slower. Okay, so that's one difference. Okay, the problem is the number of zeros. <laughs> okay, so let's make sure everyone is using the same. Okay, so max two. So now let's, let's see if things are working better. Second attempt. Let's see how many. Oops. Okay. Now I kind of have always the same bracket. Max two. That's what this takes. Okay. So this takes seven thousand. Okay. And the version I just wrote can store 7,000 elements per, s per millisecond. And the version I just wrote uh, takes, just wait, just a second, takes 24,000. Okay, that's more like it. So it's three times faster around that, right? Okay, what was happening is that the this is very confusing in terms of how many zeros there were. And in the attempt two, I was trying with 100,000. And attempt three, I was trying with a million elements. So then, of course, the throw output is different. Okay, but now um, things should be working. Uh, I'm sorry for this kind of dead space at the end. Um, so in the next video, I'm kind of going to go through some conclusions of this work.